Hi, this is Scott Sischerer, Associate Editor of Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology. And I'm here with Jonathan Spurgle, who's Professor of Pediatrics and Chief of Allergy at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about your article entitled Resolution of Acute IgE-Mediated Allergy with Development of Eosinophilic Esophagitis Triggered by the Same Food. So again, thanks for joining us. Now, you've done a lot of work with looking at the role of food allergy and eosinophilic esophagitis and the diagnostics of that connection. What was this uh, study about? What were you looking at? So this was, we had made an observation that was a series of patients who had, by just by history, had IgE to a food, classic IgE reactions to a food. So they had hives or anaphylaxis or flaring atopic mm -hmm. dermatitis to a food. But over time, they had outgrown it normally. But when they came, now they had come into us for their eosinophilic esophagitis. And we got history of that. Oh, they had that reaction before. We thought it was unrelated. But then when we started doing our diagnostic and finding out what food it was, they had EOE to the same food that they had IgE in the past too. So they outgrew one and developed the other. More likely, they always had both. One went away and one didn't. Okay, so, so the successful re-inclusion of the food that they used to have an immediate reaction to resulted in the chronic inflammation of the eosinophilic esophagitis. Exactly. So they, now they've got this, they got, they got this chronic, just exactly what you said, they have a chronic, they had both an acute reaction to a food and a chronic reaction so to a food. So aside from it being incredibly disappointing to identify that they have to remove that, that food again, how, how often, did you get a feel for how often this occurs? It's hard to tell because it's one... So it's hard, it's, the answer is hard to tell. A lot of patients in EOE, maybe 20% have IgE-mated food allergy. So we don't know how many of them are going to outgrow it, then get EOE to that. But in our cohort, we sort of did very narrowing things down to figure out the best way of doing this. And there was about 450 patients who we know that this food causes this disease. So no sort of acutely in those cases. And then in that, out of that, there was about 17 patients who we were able to really say, yes, this, this scenario actually occurred. And the interesting thing, we had sort of um, two patients who was sort of, had even gotten biopsies beforehand, because at our institutions, they're very aggressively about doing biopsies. And they had gotten biopsies for part of a failure to thrive. So our institution, failure to thrive, kids are not growing, they'll get biopsies. So these kids had normal biopsies when they had the IgE-mated food allergy. They did a, what we always do. We do allergy testing, both skin tests and immunocaps. They outgrew it. We did a challenge. Yes, they outgrew it. Wonderful. They were all very excited. Then two to three years later, all of a sudden, they come back now with belly pain. So they get another biopsy, show that they had the disease, take that food out, the food goes away. The biopsies normalize. You know, we've been worried in the direction that you take someone who has IgE immediate allergy, you take the food away from them to try to treat their EE, and then when you want to give it back, that they might have an immediate reaction from the same food. Now you've got the opposite direction going. It's like no way to win. Yeah. What do you think the bottom line is to tell the clinician uh, to think about with, with these patients? So I think, there's, I think there's two bottom lines. One is that you can get one food can cause multiple things. It tells us a little about mechanisms, but in terms of pure clinical practice, is when you get that history of the patient, that patient comes to you with EU, newly diagnosed EOE, go back and find out, did they have IgE to some of the big culprit foods, the milk, the egg, the wheat, and if they had it in the past, think about that food may now be causing their symptoms, and maybe why now they're presenting now they didn't present four years ago. Okay. Well, that's great advice, and again, thank you for, for that article and for all the other great work that you've been doing in this whole field. So, oh, Thank you for including me.